Hey guys, my name is Ismaus, and today I want to show you how to make a skybox uh, with clouds, animated clouds uh, like you see here in Blender. Let me first hide uh, this surface so that you can see the clouds moving. You can see we have some foreground clouds and uh, some background clouds. So to do this, we want, you want to, we're going to be using some Photoshop uh, to create a mirror image, sorry, a mirror ball image uh, that is going to be our skybox uh, to create that uh, background. And uh, what I'm talking about is this kind of image uh, that uh, looks uh, like this. So you can find any image you want to use, uh, any cloud image or sky image on uh, Google. This is what I'm going to use. So let me just save that and just drag it directly into Photoshop. And uh, you can make it wider by duplicating it. Uh, but uh, let's first go with this so that you can get away with the basics and then we can refine it to what to our needs after we get uh, the technical stuff out of the way. Let me just make sure this is recording. Great. Uh, so I'm just going to unlock background. And then what you want to do is, uh, first of all, let's uh, add a white background. Uh, this is going to represent our horizon. So the horizon I'm talking about is... Uh, what you see when your camera is, uh, yeah, like this. So the horizon is this here. So if you want to have a horizon, you might want, you just have to increase, just add it somewhere like that. So this is going to represent our horizon. And then you have to uh, merge this into a single image. But I'm just going to, uh, duplicate this and then Control E to make them into a into a single image. But I can see that uh, this uh, second layer here up seems to have uh, this uh, border, black border, which I don't want. So I'm just going to get rid of that uh, by just turning off uh, the stroke here, the stroke value, uh, because that will come through uh, the mirrorball as well as well if I add if I leave if I leave it there so after you make this these two now you can go under filter distort our uh, polar coordinates and uh, let me let's zoom out again so uh, this will create uh, your mirrorball image like that and then uh, if you see that uh, it has a gap like that you can just uh, use Photoshop obviously uh, I can see some of Parts of this have been cut out, so I'm just going to scrub this so that I can add that into the image. So you can see we have almost a pixel uh, not filled in here, so I can just use the clone tool uh, to add that in. So let me see this. Let's reduce the size. I'm going to be super accurate with this just cleaning up things and uh, it won't be that visible in the final render or in the final thing as well so then you can save this I just call this <coughs> mirror uh, two and then go to blender now load in that uh, let me first get rid of whatever I had before so I'll just go to my world uh, shader let me first drag this down now this is what I had for that. Uh, don't worry about that. It's not that complicated. Just uh, added a few things to make things more interesting. But uh, let, me, let me delete every all the other nodes and I just leave the default nodes, which is the background node. Uh, this is what you usually have as the default setup. Now you want to change the color into the environment texture and then load in the image you have just created, which is the mirrorball. Uh, I named mine mirror two, so let me just load that in. And uh, when you load it in, it won't look accurate because we it's using the equi rectangular projection. You want to change it to mirrorball since we created a mirrorball. And uh, its orientation is also going to be off. So you want to add some transformation uh, mapping by using Ctrl T. Make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled uh, to have this uh, shortcut work. And then you can change the texture coordinate from generated to object. Connect that to the vector. And uh, now play with the Y rotation until you get the right orientation. Uh, you might actually want to play with the, any of the rotation axes until you find uh, the correct one. So I think this should be it. So let me change. Until you see that uh, the horizon is facing the horizon, is uh, where the horizon should be. So I think I, I put my horizon quite 
low so that's why you see that uh, it's not really in position but uh, it should be the horizon should be horizontal ah uh, this here this line here should be horizontal and uh, you'd have your your image and you can see the resolution of our mirror ball uh, or our image is not really that good so what we can do to fix that is that uh, make sure if you use if you have an image like this you can duplicate it a few times uh, so that is so that you create a high resolution image now the way you do that you can just crop this and make it wider maybe twice as wide and uh, then just duplicate this and uh, i don't like this same so i'm just going to mirror this on the horizon and the horizon horizontally using ctrl t and so we have something like this uh, this is also going to help increase uh, the resolution of uh, my image so let me just get this and uh, just, uh, want to select yeah you can see what we have uh, but I, I'm, I'm not very sure i don't also like this uh, repeating others uh, going on here so i can you can find another image uh, to use another cloud image uh, to layer on top of that to hide uh, this kind of mirror uh, effect going on there uh, because of the mirror we have just added ourselves or you can even just use the same image and just uh, use the clone tool but uh, I'm going to use something like this to put it in the middle there and just play play around with blending mode let's try screen maybe make it a, just Let's try overlay or soft light. Okay, I think maybe screen is better, but uh, just play with the fill. Oh, let me just, because I, I think it's going to be harder to uh, correct uh, the colors, but uh, let me just increase the brightness of this to match uh, the colors of the other image. I think it's somewhere there and I just blend this with a mask just to get rid of uh, the repeating that uh, happens with the mirror yeah, I think that blended nicely now we can add in our horizon again I don't want this to have a border something like this but uh, again if uh, the horizon is too low uh, it's going to also be too low in your f in your scene so let me just bring that a bit up and uh, that will also help with the resolution problem we are having so I'm just going to bring this up so that the horizon is around here maybe here we can always come back and adjust it but uh, for now Let's stick with something like that, and maybe I just crop this way like that. Now I can uh, first make a backup of this, and then merge these layers, and also I want to blend in uh, this horizon so that it's not a clear line like that. So I'm just going to add a mask. that's a bit too heavy yeah something like that and uh, again we have to merge this and then use filter distort polar coordinates and uh, yeah this is what we have and uh, just to make it more uh, square you can just copy it into a different folder so let me just duplicate this image i'm sure there is a set aspect ratio to use here but i'm not too worried about that but so i'm just going to change the image here the image the height here to kind of match at least match here let me first constrain this actually not constrain the proportions let me make this about 250 yeah something like that and uh, we can add our uh, so this is going to be our horizon 
Now we can save this again. Let's call this mirror three and load in that. Okay, this time I think uh, the horizon is a bit too high and uh, uh, because we have this setup, I can just scale up uh, this mirror ball and uh, that should reduce my horizon. But uh, I think I did a mistake there. So what what should what I would prefer here is that you can just uh, convert this into a smart object so that you don't re lose any resolution while you're scaling it. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will just lose your resolution. So then we can save this again as mirror three again. Save. Then reload this. So you have to again, you have to go back and play with the horizon. I haven't really figured out uh, where the horizon should be, uh, but uh, I think you can uh, play with it a bit, play with the scale of this to get the, the right horizon because right now it's uh, maybe reduce the fade uh, between the horizon and the surface. So let's uh, try that again. Uh, reduce the transition between uh, the horizon and the surface here. So I'm just going to duplicate this again. Merge. And I think what I'm going to do is just I'll leave a very sharp horizon like that. Uh, it will make it easier for me to know where that is. Let me try making this a smart object and then see if uh, the distort will work because that makes it far easier to change. And to adjust, you can readjust the polar coordinates quite easily and make any changes you want here. So uh, this, this here can be fixed by expanding this. Yeah, so I think that's, that's the way to work using smart layers or oh, yeah, smart objects. So, and uh, now I can play with the horizon and make it this and uh, this this should also update i think it updated so now save this uh let me just save it as one load that in and you can see where the horizon now is you can see when you're in camera view it looks much better Now, after you have something like that, you can do more than, and you can see if you're looking at, uh, if you look to the top, you still see uh, the clouds and everything, unless you're looking directly here where you start to see some uh, distortion going on. But uh, for the most part, everything looks nice. And uh, then if you want to make the clouds move, you just have to, to ha you just need to mirror, ob mirror balls. So I'm just going to duplicate this and uh, find another mirror ball that, that I created. Uh, something like, I think I'll just use uh, this here. Again, uh, make sure you rotate it to get the horizon to face the right direction. So since I did that, I'm just going to reuse this texture coordinate, uh, these coordinates again. So we have these two images. And uh, now what you can do is uh, blend uh, the two here. So you can use the shortcut Control Shift and then drag from one uh, to another to mix them using the blend node. I'm just going to bring this uh, to the background and uh, this to be the foreground and change this to, let's say, let's try add. Now, if I play with the Y, you can see that uh, I'm able to move rotate these clouds and uh, I see a blend of the two. So let me split this into a timeline so that I can add some keyframes for this uh, mapping. I can just start from here, hit I, and then go
go to, to the last frame and uh, drag this and see we have some movement now I'm also going to change this from uh, the interpolation of this uh, to vector so that there is no s slowing and then speeding up of the clouds of the movement and uh, you can play with different blending modes here let's try overlay I think that is a bit more better you can make it even more contrasted and now we also want this background layer uh, to have some bit of animation so but uh, you want it to be slower than the first one so let's make it that uh, to make sure that they're all going the same direction so i think this one is a, a bit fast so let me fix that reduce that and uh, uh, this is a uh, using yeah so something like that you can see how the clouds are moving So I think they're still moving a bit faster, so you can play around with that and uh, until you get something uh, that you like. So let me show you what I did here. It's the same setup, but I think, yeah, for, I used, I tiled this a little bit more uh, so that I have a better resolution and uh, my image is a bit a wider uh, it's a higher resolution image because i tell this i think a bit four, four times up and down uh that's why you see that uh, the resolution here is much better than uh, what i've just showed you in the example you can see and uh, i slowed down uh, the animation a bit as well so the clouds are yeah this is how you do that and i think it came out uh, pretty nicely so you can have your animation and uh, I think the water is also animated. Yes, increase the scale. Maybe uh, the scale for the water and maybe increase the animation of the waters so that it is much faster. Let's see. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, yeah, if you want the project files, you can find them on my Patreon page and uh, thank you.